This is Absinthe. Created back in the 1700s and nicknamed the Green Fairy, Absinthe has gained quite the reputation throughout the years. So much so that at one point it was even believed to cause hallucinations. However, that was a lie. So with that in mind, let's talk about the history of Absinthe, what Absinthe is, and then finally, how to drink Absinthe in the traditional French way, plus in a refreshing cocktail. To kick off this history lesson, Absinthe was created in Switzerland, but gained most of its popularity in France during the 19th century. During this time in France, Absinthe was enjoyed by virtually all social classes. This unanimous love for Absinthe created the Green Hour. The Green Hour is very similar to the modern American Happy Hour, where at 5.30 on a weekday, you can grab your boys, head on down to the local Applebee's and get smashed on some $2 drinks. However, this mass popularity gained Absinthe two major enemies. The first one being the temperance movement. However, the second enemy, the wine industry, was a much bigger problem. You see, up until this point, wine was the drink of the French people. And within less than a century, Absinthe had almost completely taken over. So in one of the strangest crossovers in history, the wine industry teamed up with the temperance movement in order to take down Absinthe. And how did they do this, you might ask? Well, one of the most noble and respectable ways possible, a schmear campaign. Remember in the intro how I said people would think it'd make them hallucinate? Well, a lot of that stems from wine industry propaganda. There is a very famous case where a man went to a bar and had seven glasses of wine, six glasses of brandy, and then two glasses of Absinthe. When he went home, he murdered his entire family. A little dramatic, I know. But when the story came out, they blamed it completely on the absinthe, claiming that it had made him hallucinate and go mad, and that's why he did it. Furthermore, they would hire doctors to make those same claims. But if everyone in France is drinking absinthe and no one else is hallucinating, it literally says it's sus. Nonetheless, the schmear campaign worked and by 1915, absinthe had been banned in a lot of European countries and even in the US. However, years went by and finally unbiased research was conducted and it was concluded that absinthe does not make you hallucinate. However, this took some time and for the US in particular, we did not get authentic absinthe until 2007, almost a hundred years later. Whew, that was a lot of history and a lot of drama for a little green drink. But what is this little green drink? Well, absinthe typically clocks in between 45 and 74% ABV. It gets its flavor from a trinity of three ingredients, grande wormwood, green anise, and fennel. These aromatic ingredients create somewhat of a bitter tasting licorice spirit. If you're looking for authentic absinthe, make sure the absinthe you're buying is made with grande wormwood especially. And although there are different styles of absinthe like blanche and absinthe, vert is the French adored classic you're probably familiar with and the one we'll be drinking in today's video. Speaking of drinking absinthe, let's actually do that. But before we do that, I did want to say a couple things. The first one being, thank you. This channel literally exploded and your guys' support the whole way through has been phenomenal. Seeing you guys leave the kindest comments and then coming back to watch another video of mine is just absolutely amazing to me. This video was originally to celebrate 10,000 subscribers and now we're at 20,000 subscribers, which is even more insane. But that leads me to my next point of being the obvious break in between videos. I was gone for like seven months. <sighs> Sorry. This was something that was not planned. And to be truthful with you guys, life got crazy for both the good and the bad. But that being said, uh, I don't think we're done yet. I still enjoy making videos and I still have a lot of ideas for the channel. So to wrap this all up, you guys are amazing. Thanks so much. And hopefully we're just getting started. Now let's get back to the good stuff. Like I said in the intro, let's go ahead and start with the French traditional way before we move into something more modern. Besides your absinthe, to get this started, you will need a fancy little reservoir glass, an absinthe or slotted spoon, some sugar cubes, and then some ice water. Go ahead and grab that fancy little reservoir glass and you're gonna start by filling the bottom part or the reservoir part with your absinthe. If you are not using this type of glass, that's okay. The measurement is usually one part absinthe to three to five parts water. Now that you have your reservoir filled up, go ahead and place your slotted spoon across the top of the glass and gingerly place one sugar cube in the middle of the spoon. Now I want to debunk a myth that usually happens on this next step. Some people will pour absinthe over the sugar cube and then light it on fire. This is considered the bohemian way and is not traditional to the French style. Most absinthe snobs will frown upon it, but personally I think it looks cool. Just be careful when you're doing it. So skipping the fire, very slowly pour ice water over the sugar cube. As the water and sugar combine with the absinthe, it's going to get cloudy. This is called a louche. A louche is created when insoluble ingredients in the absinthe mix with the water. This is typically the star anise or the fennel. The cloudier the louche, the more quality the absinthe usually is. The cold water also helps some of the more hidden flavors of the absinthe come out. Once your sugar cube has completely dissolved, take your spoon and give your absinthe one final stir before you enjoy. Let's try this out. All right, so here we have our absinthe, the traditional French way. Uh, definitely no expert, but the louche seems to be looking pretty cloudy, which I think is a good thing. Truthfully, 
I'm horrified. Uh, it smells exactly like black licorice and I do not enjoy that flavor at all. But nonetheless, that has not stopped us before. So cheers. I think the most surprising thing about this is that it has almost a creamy and smooth uh, flavor and mouthfeel to it. That black licorice flavor is still that kind of prevailing flavor, but it has, like I said, this weird, almost like milky flavor to it. I don't know if that's the water and the sugar in there, but it definitely is not what I expected to taste. Overall, it's a pretty smooth experience too. The bottle that I'm using is 62% ABV or 124 proof, and you don't even really get that kind of uh, when you try it, it's just very, very smooth, not really in your face. If you're thinking about buying a bottle, it's really gonna come down to, one, do you wanna just have fun with it? But then two, do you like that star anise, warm wood, and fennel flavor profile? Alrighty, so now that we've tried absinthe, the traditional French style, let's go ahead and use it in a cocktail, but keep it classy. Although there are a bunch of famous cocktails that use absinthe, like Death in the Afternoon, that is a real cocktail, I decided to go a more unique path and put it into a gimlet. To start off, go ahead and grab your shaker and fill it with ice. For this, you're gonna need one and a half ounces of dry gin, half an ounce of your absinthe, half an ounce of lime cordial. I'm using roses. This is kind of the classic thing you would use for a gimlet. Then go ahead and add a quarter ounce of lime juice, a half ounce of chilled water. And once you got all that in a shaker, go ahead and embarrass yourself. <laughs> Once you have that shaken up, go ahead and pour it into a coupe or martini glass. Then we're going to get a little fancy with it and garnish with a star anise and then a lime wheel. Now it's ready to enjoy. Let's try this out. Alrighty, here we have our absinthe gimlet. So the first thing I noticed right off the bat when I was pouring it out of the shaker was because we're mixing it with a little bit of water and we're shaking it with that ice, it does create that louche effect. So you're going to get that kind of cloudy effect. But with that in mind, let's go ahead and give this a try. So right away, I already enjoy this a lot more than the traditional French way. Although that black licorice flavor is still there, it kind of gets masked up by the citrus and the gin. However, it's still there. So if you're someone who likes really kind of complex flavors or even just are more on the aromatic side of flavors with your cocktails, I think this would be great. Even for myself who really does not like the taste of black licorice, it does kind of work well with the lime juice. Surprisingly, the other really strange thing that I'm noticing with absinthe is that both in the traditional French way and in the cocktail, it doesn't taste strong. Typically, liquors that are over 40% will kind of hit you with that and kind of burn on the way down. You know, you feel like you're drinking something that's over 40%, but both in the traditional French way and the cocktail, it goes on really smooth. It doesn't really feel like you're drinking liquor besides those kind of more aromatic flavors. Even with two different liquors in this drink, it does not taste like it's a very, very strong drink. Now, be careful because it is. The gin itself is 47%. The absinthe itself is uh, 62%. So you're in for a rough time if you underestimate this stuff, but it doesn't taste like it's that high percentage. But, you know, overall, not bad. Definitely give it a try if you're into more aromatic cocktails. All right, friends, that was absinthe, an incredibly infamous drink with a complicated history. Hopefully today's video helped clear the air on absinthe and maybe even inspired you to try it yourself. But with that in mind, thanks for watching. Thanks for helping us reach 20,000 subscribers, and hopefully I will see you in the next one. Peace.